Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Second Union Baptist Church. Our mission is to promote spiritual growth, connect with the community, and to promote a deeper connection with God. Our vision is teaching, reaching, and loving. This is Second Union Baptist Church. We invite you to join us on our prayer line. Join us every Tuesday and Thursday at 645 a.m. The number is 267-807-9495. And the code is 114-319-289-POUND. We hope that you can join us for prayer. Using that same number and code, we invite you to Bible study. That is every Thursday on that prayer line at 7 p.m. as we dig deeper into the word and things of the Lord. If you are in our sanctuary online or by phone and want to give on today, we invite you to download the Givelify app. Tap, give, and done. You are free to give online on today. We ask that you search Second Union Baptist Church. And as you can see on the screen, we are verified. We do appreciate your gifts in advance. If you do not want to give on today online, we ask that you can also mail it to P.O. Box 801, Goochland, Virginia 23063. Again, you are more than welcome to give online using our church website or the Givelify app. Or you can stop by today after service for those of you online or by phone. And we are happy to collect your offering that way as well. All high school and college grads at any level, please do give your name to Sister Julia Norris by Sunday, June the 5th. We are honoring you. If you are watching online or listening by phone, please do email 1865subc at gmail.com. Also, please do make plans to be at church in person on Sunday, June 12th. Again, please do make plans to be here in the sanctuary on Sunday, June 12th for your recognition. In our community announcements for today, there is a scholarship available for all high school seniors, and this comes from the Sund Owners Motorcycle Club, headed up by Mr. Barrett Baskfield. If you would like to apply, applications are actually due this week on June 1st. You can email Barrett Baskfield at Dina Lau Rai 2002 at gmail.com. D E N A L I R I D E 2002 at gmail.com. Goochland High School graduation 2022. That'll take place on this coming Saturday, June 4th at the Goochland High School at 7.30 p.m. Again, it will take place this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at Goochland High School. So let's go out and support our seniors. And just before we close on today, we do have one birthday. We want to say happy, happy birthday to Deacon Rodney Jackson. We do know that God will bless you with many, many more. And we do have another birthday on today. We want to wish Miss Michelle Pace Trent a happy, happy birthday. We say may God bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you. You are all caught up on this week of Sunday, May 29th, 2022. Oh, oh, oh. 
shall be how it is. Lord, you are good. Lord, you have been mighty in my life. Lord, if it was not for you, I never would have made it. I don't know where I would be, Lord, if it wasn't for your goodness and your glory. Every now and again, we just need to get in his presence. Every now and again, we just need to get in his presence. Know that he is there, he is God. Besides him, there is none. I wish I could sing all of this song. But it simply says, I need you, I need your glory. I want your glory. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory. Show me your power. Less of me and more. says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double minds. Yes. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. 
We thank you for looking beyond our faults and supplying our each and every need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being a present help in time of trouble. Thank you for being the one that restores us, delivers us, replenishes us. Thank you for not leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you for strength when we find ourselves weak. Lord God, have thine own way. Speak with our lips, think with our mind, hear with our ears. Minister by way of your Holy Spirit to this our people. All who are here, all who are watching and listening, Lord, minister in a mighty and powerful way. That someone will come running, crying, what must I do to be saved? That someone would even send a message, dear God, through technology saying, I gave my life to Christ on this day. We thank you now, dear Lord. Have that own way. We will not fail to give you all of the honor, glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Again, intimacy with God. Intimacy. Last week, we began talking about intimacy with God and how this component should be the number one priority in each and every life of those who believe in Jesus Christ. There were several points that we pondered in connection to opening the door to position ourselves in an intimate space with God. First, we suggested a regular meeting or appointment with God because every child of God should have a place to meet with God in which you can converse with him with no interruptions. For Jesus, for Jesus, he would distance himself from the crowd and even his inner circle to have his quiet time with his heavenly father. He made it a top priority. He had a, watch this, regular disciplined time to be alone with his father each day. His quiet time with the father, his heavenly father, catch this, it was intentional. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't because he was going through something. It wasn't because he found himself in hard places in his life. It was intentional. And it was necessary that I meet my heavenly father each and every day. And can I tell you that before you meet anyone else on any given day, before you talk to anyone else on any given day, before you call or text anyone else on any given day, baby, make sure you first text God, make sure sure you first talk to God. Make sure you first pick up your phone in your spiritual realm and call God before you go out and meet anyone else. In other words, it was a priority. Catch this, he built it into his day. And it required efforts. Effort to wake up early before everyone else, an effort to go out of away from everyone else so he could talk to the Father by himself. How intentional are you in your daily time with the Father? Do you have a schedule? Do you make sure that you talk to God each and every day? Or do you wait until you get here to church? Do you wait until you get on Bible study line? Or is it built into your daily schedule that every day, not only once a day, but several times 
the day. Sometime all day long, I'm talking to my heavenly father because if I don't talk to him, I can't make it through this day. If I don't talk to him, I can't deal with these individuals that I have to deal with if I don't talk to him. Second, we talked about last week, we suggested that the more we worship him, the more intimately involved with God we become. Jesus even emphasized in his teaching that worship was structurally and functionally designed by God as a means whereby mankind can come into intimate relationship of fellowship with the Father. In other words, we get to a place where we are so intimate with God, we become naked and exposed. We are very, very vulnerable in the presence of God. And not to be ashamed or feel the loss of one's dignity or prestige. See, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That God knows every detail of my life. He already knows it, but it's different when you tell God every detail of your life. You know, some things, and some people, you don't tell them everything. Folk got to pull, pull it out of you. They, they got to uh, try hard, like pulling teeth. But when you come before God, Drop the front. Drop the appearance of. And say, Lord, here I am. Lord, this is what you call. I don't know why, but here I am. This is who you place in ministry, but I don't know why, but here I am exposing every detail that you already know in heaven to get closer to you. Say, draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to you. Thirdly, we suggested that to become intimate with God, we must desire his presence. So much that we become addicted to it. Now the hand, draw near to God, he says. And he will come near in response. To draw near to God, however, demands his cleansing. Because he says in the text, he says, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Both wash and purify are verbs that refer to ceremonial cleansing. A figure that spoke eloquently to uh, the Jewish converts, the, the need for cleansing is clear. From the way James addressed his readers, listen at what he says, you sinners and that you double-minded. Recognition of the tremendous need for cleansing allows no room for merriment or, or grieve or to be afflicted, he says, mourn and wail was James' candid advice. In other words, exchange merriment for mourning and gaiety for gloom. A downcast look, lowered eyes. In other words, a contrite spirit of confession is essential for God's cleansing. It is essential to be intimate with God because intimacy with God and sin cannot occupy the same space. Let me again give you three points, and I'll be done. To ponder over as it relates to intimacy with God. The first thing you have to know is ways. His ways are not our ways. So you definitely got to know his ways. 
If you want to get close to him, if you want to be intimate with him, because Psalms 103 and 7 says, God made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. His ways are higher than our ways. We need to surrender to his ways and don't insist, catch this, on doing things our way. Because doing things our way will not drive us closer to God. It would drive us further away from God. That's why I have to know his ways. That's when we come to know him more deeply and intimately. When we get into his word all by ourselves and get to know him for who he is, for what he has done, for what he will do, for what he's already prepared for you and I. When we leave this world, it's a shame. If you've been in church for 20, 30 years and you don't know what's going to happen after you die because maybe you don't know him. Secondly, secondly, seek his glory. The Hebrew word for glory is Torah, which means weighty presence. The Greek word for glory is doxa, which means brilliance or radiance. The glory of God brings intimacy, signs, and wonders. The more intimacy we have with God, the more of his glory we shall experience. See, the more of his glory we experience, and the more we will become intimate with him. Amen. It is a sad day, thank you, Holy Spirit, if you operate in ministry and you never spend any time with God. How dare you come into this place to do any type of ministry, any type of service without spending some private time How can you serve him when you don't even spend time with him? We get to know everything else. We get to know everything. We know everything else about everybody else. We don't take the time to get to know God. What about me? Gossip about me and smile. Yeah. I know everything. And what we need to do is get to know God. Yeah. It says, it says to be intimate. Be intimate, we have to learn to seek his glory. Remember, Moses even asked God to show him his glory. It's amazing. Request by Moses to see God in his splendor. And even greater than that, the request was honored. He was shown God, but only to a certain degree. God's glory has depths and measures that go beyond our comprehension. I'm talking about God showing up in his manifest presence and he invades the place. That's what we need to experience. God invading the place. In church, it don't matter. God invade this place. In my home, it does not matter. Invade this place. If I'm sitting on the back porch, it doesn't matter. God, I just want you to come in and invade the reality and experience of his presence transforms those who are in the midst. When we seek his glory, we realize his wonder. Because seeing God's glory in the heavens and the earth points to how amazing and wonderful he is. We see his power and majestic beauty. 
We realize when we see his glory, we realize his goodness. When we give God praise, it reminds us how good he is, and it also is a testimony to others of how loving and kind our God really, truly is. And we realize his desire for personal intimacy. God wants to be personal with you. He wants to be intimate with you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you are. God still wants to be intimate with you. God's presence shows up. It makes God real and personal. He's no longer just the God who exists in the heavens. But when we experience his presence, his glory, we understand that he's the God who comes in, wanting to dwell among men. He wants to be with you. There is no greater place than to be in God's presence. Sensing the warmth of his love and the joy of his spirit. And finally, finally, see his face. See his face. We see everything else. You know what? Most of us see it until we do. Even the bad. We see it until we do. We look at someone's face. We're better able to gauge their mood. We understand if I come in, those who know me can look and say, that's angry. Look at someone's face, you can see if they're happy, if they are sad, if they're in a despondent place. If we're looking in someone's face, we are prepared to actively listen to whatever they have to say. And it's the same way with seeking God's face. When we talk about seeking God's face, it means we are seeking to know him, understand his character, and hear his voice. Bible instructs us to seek God's face. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. And why? Why are we seeking his face? Different translations with the word face as presence. And the ESV, this verse is translated as seek the Lord and his strength in Psalms 105 and 4. Seek his presence continually. The Lord wants us to seek, to spend time with him in his presence more than anything else. Can I tell you that showing up at church is not enough? When we leave here, how many hours do we give God during the week? How often are we seeking his face? How often are we seeking to get into his presence? Or is it just a 911 call to him? When something happens, when an emergency shows up, when the child is not acting right, when something tragic happens in our life. He wants us to spend time. promises that we will find. He says, you will seek me when you seek me with all of your heart. You will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. When we seek God, we get to know him. We? we get to know him. We desire him more than anything else. Psalm 63, 1, 2, and 3, it expresses with strong desire. This is the psalmist, oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. It says, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. 
It's in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary. will praise you. When we seek God and find him, it's bound to translate into praising him. You start seeking him and find him. He ain't lost anyway. When you bump into his presence, the praise will begin to flow. When you get into that place with God, you begin to worship you begin to praise him. You see, you have to understand, seek the face of God. His word, prayer, and worship. We read his word. We learn his character and his ways. And as we pray to God and spend time with him, we learn to hear his word. You say that you're connected to God. You say that He is your heavenly Father, but you can hear Him. Seek Him now. Yeah. We worship Him. He shows us. We welcome Him. We are blessed in His presence. Yeah. We seek and find God's face. We see Him looking with favor. He loves you. Intimacy with God. Know his ways. You got to know him. Seek his ways. Then seek his ways. Amen. And the one who will seek him. And all we need to do is sit. Spend some time with God. Seek his ways. Get to know him. We're mindful that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But that's why God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't have a connection, relationship with God, then this is your day, this is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord. Man, woman, boy, or girl. He's waiting with all the wide open. Come and accept him. God is your heavenly father. Jesus Christ is your savior. The Holy Spirit is your God. Is there one? Is there one? Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for every person in this place. Thank you for ministering to their hearts and to their minds. As we discipline ourselves to seek your face, to know you, to seek your glory, to make sure that you're on our schedule each and every day of our lives. Lord God, you hear the cries of your children. You hear their petitions even if, as they whisper them quietly to themselves. 
that some ponder over situations in their heart now. Father God, you have a solution. You are the solution. You are the source of our strength. We thank you now for healing. We thank you now for touching and delivering, dear God. We thank you, dear Lord. Somebody thinks they've done so much that they cannot be forgiven, but dear God, you died to free us from the penalty of sin. You are a forgiving God. Minister of forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear Lord. We love you, Father God. Bless this ministry. Thank you for what you've given us. We're grateful, dear Lord, that you've favored us in this season. Bless the offering, bless those who gave. And we thank you, God. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ministry.